Dr. Nurse Podcast Nation, welcome to the podcast episode today. Today we are chatting with Dr. Jessica Chung. She is a doctorally prepared nurse practitioner that focused her research on patient education and medication adherence and developed an adherence therapy tool that can be used in various clinical settings to assess the risk of medication non-adherence and methods to improve patients taking their medications and that collaboration between a patient and a provider. She also had a dream of opening her own private practice, which she did in 2019. And she provides a variety of healthcare services to patients of all ages. And due to her vast knowledge of starting a business, you know, kind of managing a practice, she decided to launch also an international business association for nurses where she helps nursing professionals and other healthcare providers become entrepreneurs. So I'm so happy to have you on the podcast today. I am so about nurse practitioners starting their own businesses, starting side hustles, starting small, bridging their careers so that they don't, they're not as reliant on the hospital for a job to give them more freedom. We are aligned. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's so exciting. And thanks again for coming on and chatting with my guests and my audience and just letting them know like what their options are. So tell me again how you see yourself, how do you view your career and kind of what your roles are these days? Yeah, so I guess I'll start with my role and what I do. Obviously, being a nurse, family nurse practitioner, doctorally prepared, that was something that I did not plan on, you know, going back to school for my doctorate. That was just something someone close to me, a mentor had suggested and advised that I do. And I was against it for for a while. And then I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do this because why not? You know, why not go, you know, a way above what I think I can do? And so nonetheless, here I am. And, you know, being a healthcare provider is something I've been doing. I've, I've been in healthcare and nursing all my career. It's the only career a path I know as far as being a profession. And I love helping people. So I love, you know, being able to now do that in my own practice, kind of being able to determine how that's done, how I feel is the best way to care for people in the primary care setting, being that, you know, I've worked in other places, worked in hospitals, worked in other clinics, places, and I saw the deficits in the healthcare system, especially outpatient primary care. And so I love that I'm able now to do that and focus on caring for my own patients, as well as, you know, now I'm also to help able to help other people, other healthcare professionals start their own practice as well, start their own businesses. So it's just been an amazing journey. I would say like these past four or five years, you know, just embarking on things that I did not know I was even capable of going beyond what, you know, society says that we as nursing and advanced practice nursing professionals can do and should do. So that's, that's just, you know, what I'm doing and <laughs> what I will continue to do. So how is your primary care practice different from those around, you know, an, another primary care provider? Like, how are you different? Yeah, so my primary care practice is known as what is a new kind of model of care, primary care services, which is direct primary care. So basically what that means is that we offer our services in our office based on a monthly membership. So kind of like a subscription service for healthcare services. So that's what mainly allows us to stand out from a lot of other primary care offices in my local area is that a lot of them are heavily based on accepting insurance, whereas we do not have to, and we can provide services to those individuals who don't have access to health insurance, or they don't, you know, they, they don't want the cost of health care insurance. So by no means is it a replacement for health insurance, you know, health insurance has its benefits. But when I started to think about you know, my role when I was, you know, back as a registered nurse, when I was working PRN or working for ACs, I didn't have access to health insurance, you know, in those roles. But, you know, I still wanted that security of being able to, you know, go to the doctor, go to a, a provider and get checked out and not have it to think about going to the ER for simple things. And I realized I was like, you know, people who are contact workers or people who are entrepreneurs, business owners, they really don't know, or mm. I should say, they really don't have a way for them to obtain quality services without thinking about, oh, well, I don't have health insurance, so there's no way I can, you know, get an annual physical. There's no way I can get seen without paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars, which is actually not the case. So I thought about myself when I mm. decided to 
to model my practice based off this model doing direct primary care. So that really allows us to stand out from others that are in the local area. Yeah, that's really cool. And again, I think the fact that you can provide care in a way that you want to provide care is also really important. Again, because one of the things that you find whenever you work in primary care or you just work in a hospital setting and you're having to work for someone else is you've got to adhere to what they say, right? Yes. And so by kind of creating something that you're like, no, I feel like I'm servicing a population of people that are like me, that are entrepreneurs or maybe yeah. again, growing business or don't have the, you know, the money at this time, I can actually support them and give them good quality care. I think that's, I think that's really great. Yes. And what made you decide to start your own business in 2019? Like, again, what made you go like, I think it's time for me to branch out on my own. It was something that I knew I was going to do probably around 2016, 2017. I knew after I graduated with my master's in 2015 and I was working in an internal med medical practice. Mm. So I was there for about a year. And as I made the decision to go back to school for my doctorate, once I started that program in 2017, I pretty much knew at that point that that was what I wanted to do. Oh. And I knew that there were things that I wanted to accomplish that I wasn't going to be able to do that just working for someone or working for some health healthcare system. Yeah. Yeah. And by no means, you know, I tell people this, that it is very honorable to have, you know, a good paying position, yep. working professionally as an employee. I just knew for me, there was more. There was more yes. I wanted to do. There was more I wanted to see. And it was outside of just, you know, my regular what became an office job, it, it literally, that's what it became to me a Monday through Friday, nine to five. And I just said, you know, there's gotta be something more and there's, there's gotta be a way that I can do this, but do it differently from what I've been seeing and what I'm accustomed to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's turning the work into a passion, right? And Basically, that's kind of what yeah, I wanted to love. Describing. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. love what I was doing. I didn't want to dread, you know, coming in and, just dealing with the other things that come with, you know, being working on a job. Yeah. And I, I, I felt like no matter where I worked, I never fit into the mold of mm. either that company or that office. I, I just felt like I was always trying to strive to do more. And so with that, I said, you know what? I knew that that entrepreneurship was probably the route I was going to go in, in starting my own practice. Yeah. So one of the things the elite nurse practitioner, Justin Allen, he's been on the podcast before. He's so fabulous. But there's also a financial ceiling that you hit when you work in primary care practices that the doctors have control over what you can make and what you can bring home. And you have to kind of negotiate for your RBUs and all these different things that, again, when you own your own practice, like you're just like, I'm not going to negotiate with anyone. Like I'm, I'm doing right. it, you know? So there's also the financial aspect as well. Which, yeah. Again, I love to focus on the passion part and making sure you're enjoying what you're doing, but let's be real. We all want to get paid. So it's like, right. there's also that aspect that there's a lot, a lot more responsibility, but there's also a lot more to gain when you're able to get those systems in place to operate your business. You're able to really create what it is that you want as far as making money and right. the patient load, things like that. And you get to decide, I don't want to see this patient because they're, you know, inappropriate or whatever. And you can dismiss yeah. them from your clinic. Like there's right. different <laughs> things where when you're working at a problem, yeah. so like you don't have a choice. Like you need to go in there and you're like, they're abusive. Like they're not kind. Yeah. They're, you know, so you get so much more autonomy and that autonomy, I know it does come with a little bit of a cost, but for some people it's totally worth it. So how did you it know is. when you were ready to become an entrepreneur? Was it something that you was a slow build? Like you started with a slow little side hustle of like seeing patients on the side while working at your, you know, your job, and then you slowly transitioned over or did you just jump all in? I pretty much, I took the time to, you know, work out the details and do the research of how I was going to actually do this. So I did that while obtaining my doctorate. So I kind of was like in school and then also doing my, my research on my own on the side. And once I got all the details and what I felt I was ready, literally one day, it, was, it wasn't it was like, you know, I said, oh, I planned it out. And I said, on this day, I'm going to launch. Literally one yeah. day I said, no, nope, I'm doing this. I'm doing this and I'm starting it today. And I remember, you know, doing the legal things that I need to get in place, making yeah. the right phone call. And I want to say within two weeks, I was seeing my first patient. 
you know, I had like launched, wow. I didn't even have a web- website yet. I had like just posted on social media and then because I was seeing like my first patient. So I literally just, I, I went from, you know, kind of like a, a steady process in doing the research. And then literally I just, one day I just said, it's time to go. It's time for me to do this. And it literally has continued to build since then. I started yeah. out very small and very, had a lot of free time just because, you know, I didn't have a lot of yeah. patience of my own. Had a lot of yeah. free time. I had a lot of time to, you know, figure out the details, work out the kinks, yeah. uh, my mistakes. You know, business definitely is a process in itself, but healthcare, medical practice business, that's a whole different ball game. So there was a lot of things that I learned as I started that I feel like if I didn't start, I would not have learned those things. Yeah. There's just some things that you are going to come across in the process that unless you actually start the process, you won't even notice. You won't see these things. So I slowly built, you know, I started doing house calls. I was going to see patients after after work on the weekends. Oh, wow. Yes. And then I transitioned to a small, you know, one room office and I had it set up like an exam room. It was literally my my work office and exam room all in one. Yeah. And then next thing you know, I was like moving on to, you know, another office and then a bigger office. And I literally just signed a contract for a new building. So last week, so it just, I it just continued to build and there wasn't, I, I can't give anyone like, you know, a roadmap. Okay. This is what I did here. This is what I did there. It just came as I went. Now I can, you know, give someone more of a guideline and I can help people, which is what I do now. And because I've, I've gone through that process that took me maybe two to three years to figure out where now I'm helping people and they've got it done in like three months and they're launching and they're, you know, having their grand opening. So I, I'm glad I went on the journey because I just feel then, you know, because I, my journey was the way it was, God has just allowed me to be a, a source of information and an a bit of influence to others out there that want to do the same thing. Yeah, that's really, really good. And I'm going to stop on there for just a couple of minutes because I think one of the things that you said that was important was that you shrunk your time frame from when it took you to launch and to really be proficient and, you know, have your business running well. And now you're able to shrink that time. And so yeah. one of the other guests on my podcast said, you know, if you don't have the money, you're going to struggle a little bit more if you can't pay for the resources, right? right. But you just got to put in the work. So the work is what you end up leveraging. But yes. if you can pay someone to get you there faster, then that is another way of getting your business off the ground. That's completely absolutely you know, appropriate. And if you're able to save up that money. So what I always tell people is like, if you have a day job, keep working that day job, absolutely. save the money so that you can have someone teach you reputable, but he teach you how to build a business on the side and to start small, like you said, starting on the weekends. Again, yeah. you're grinding. It sucks to grind. It does. Yeah. You're like, it I want to be home watching Netflix and chilling. But then you think of that person. That's like who you are today. Now you're teaching people how to build their businesses and to start off. And so it's like, yeah, you got to put in that grind work. And I tell myself at different times and I've been like grinding and I'm like, I'm pregnant. I'm tired. I don't want to grind anymore. You know? Right. And so I'm just like, Sandra, like you're doing this for that future that future mom, yeah. that future so that you can go and say like, I, gr- I, I remember grinding, like, just yes. like you spend your time in the trenches as a nurse and you, I have such empathy when a nurse is like, can you help me? And I'm like, of course, what do you mean to do? Like, cause I've right. been there, you know, you just have more perspective. Yes. So yeah, I think that's really, really good. Really good advice. What's one aspect of business that's been difficult to overcome? And what is one aspect of business that's been easy because of your background as a nurse? So one background, so one, so yeah, so one thing that was hard and one thing that was easy. So I think one thing that is always, I, I, it gets, it gets easier over time, but it's always a challenge is marketing. Marketing is always a challenge because the age we live in is very, you know, social media driven. So what used to work, you know, five, 10 years ago is totally different now. You know, it used to be the standard, you know, get business cards and have business cards, hand them out. Now it's like, you have to be present on social media. You have to be very innovative in how you mark, market your services and 
being able to really capture the attention of people who need your services. So marketing, I feel like is something I'm suddenly learning literally like every day on how to be yeah. better, do better in my marketing. As far as what has helped me or what is not so difficult, I think just the hands-on aspect of just being a hard worker and working hard to build my business, just because that comes naturally from my educational and professional background and just getting in there and doing the research and reading and challenging myself. So that part comes easy because it's a part of who I am. You know, I've taken, you know, the NCLEX, I've taken the board exam, I've seen the most complex patients. And so that part comes easy to me because I understand what it is to, you know, work hard and challenge myself. So, yeah, so definitely marketing is def marketing is definitely the, the one thing that I would say is always become something that I'm really learning and, you know, wanting to do better at. Yeah, I will, I will say this because I've, I've come out and made comments that I feel like the doctrine in nursing is, and I know this is going to be very controversial, so here we go. Let me just stir the pot. But like, sometimes I feel like the doctorate in nursing, which I have obtained, so I'm saying this with doing the work. So it's not from a place of like, I think it's garbage and I haven't done it. No, I've done it. So I definitely feel like the doctorate of nursing didn't necessarily give me any other career options unless I was going to climb the corporate ladder, right? So like, that's how I felt about the degree. And to a certain extent, I felt like, for my time in my life, that was not the best use of my time. But when mm -hmm. I will, and I'll just, just say it, it's a lot of money. And by the grace of God, I, I got it for free. So if I, for the most part, paid for it. So if I would have had to pay for that degree completely out of pocket, I would have been really upset with yeah. the outcome. I'm going to be a hundred, but I will even add, and I will say this, that what the doctorate did give me is the ability to push myself to the limit and know right. that I still had more. And yeah. so I still had more I could give. That's one of the things that I look back and I'm like, I can't regret it because yes, the work and necessarily the trajectory of my career, I don't see going up the hospital chain of command. I just don't like, I don't, that doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. But, but I do think that it taught me, and I don't know if you feel this way and you might agree or disagree, but I felt like it did teach me how to push myself to the edge and to the limit of how much can I learn? How much can I be an expert in an area? How much can I really work? And that right. work ethic is something now that I can't turn off. Like my husband right. laughs all the time. He's like, you hustle so hard. I'm like, I had to, I worked part-time as a nurse practitioner. Yeah. I was working full-time <laughs> as a nurse practitioner. I had to finish my doctorate. I had to do the project. I had to, you know, like get the classes done. I had to follow up. Like there was so much that I had to just do that almost right. kind of like doctors, like when they finally get out into practice and like, mm -hmm. when they have a break, they're like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, right. Cause I'm always so busy, you know, right. so that yeah. work ethic that you're describing, I know was definitely flamed during my doctoral degree and definitely something that I'm not saying you can't get another way. I just know that it helped me personally develop as a person right. or personally develop as a person, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, just I know developing as a person of yeah. like character, that work ethic character is what, what it really gave me, which is, I think very valuable, especially yes. when you're saying, Hey, listen, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got to be working. I don't have those options of, you know, there's nobody else to do it. There's nobody else to right. do your doctoral program. It's, so you right. got to message this person. You got to call this person. Like it's all that stuff. I think it's yeah. good character building. So Absolutely. That's I don't know. What do you think? For me, it was once I made the decision to obtain my doctorate for me, it was just a matter of why, why not just go all the way. Yeah. If, if there's something for me to obtain, and it's at its highest level. So yeah. if we think about like, well, if your company says the highest salary you can make is 150,000 and you make 100,000, you're going to work your butt off to get that 150,000. Yeah, so that if, 50. If, right. So if there's a educational program if for my profession that is at its highest level, I want that highest level. I don't want to yeah. shortchange myself. Yeah. And so one thing I've learned over the years is that the doctorate program, the DMP specifically, is not for everyone, yeah. by no means. Yeah. There are some individuals that it's not for them, and that's okay. There are some individuals that they know that there's more they want to do, 
And yet they, I see this a lot. I see it a lot on social media where there's always people like saying, oh, the doctor degree, DNP program is unnecessary. You don't need it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. And that may be the case for you, but for other it may not be the case because they may want to achieve more. And yes. I guess, let me be honest, that the, having the title gives you a lot, a lot, at least it gave me a lot of leverage. It yeah. gave me a lot of leverage professionally and financially and for opportunities. And it just, it just opened a lot of doors for me where people didn't see me as just Jessica Chung, family nurse practitioner, but now it was like, oh, you're Dr. Jessica Chung, doctor of nursing practice and family nurse practitioner. We would love to, for you to join us to do this or that. And we want you to be here and we would love to collaborate with you on this and that. So, I mean, you know, people will say whatever they want, but for me, it was, it opened doors. It allowed me to gain a lot of leverage, a lot of opportunities was if I was still working for a company or in corporate healthcare, then maybe it would definitely have allowed me to climb the corporate ladder, sure. but it was just a personal decision I made to just obtain the highest standard of what is, what was available to me. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask you, and again, this again might be stirring the pot a little bit, but <laughs> did you hear about the nurse practitioner who had been calling herself doctor? I think Absolutely. In California, yeah. And, you know, she's gotten sued by the physicians. What did you think about that? I mean, what was um, some of your You thoughts? know, I read a couple articles because, you know, I'm like, well, I want to hear the whole story. And of course, sure. know, sometimes articles can be written biased. Yes. Um, but, you know, it. when I read the article, it seemed as if possibly maybe she was targeted by an individual or individuals. It, it didn't yeah. seem like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, there was this, you know, grand investigation on all nurse practitioners and let's find the ones that yeah, are not targeted. It seemed like yeah. maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe, a, maybe it was a patient complaint. Maybe it was a patient that wasn't happy with her plan of care. Maybe they wanted to, you know, just find a way to get back at that. I feel that, you know, let me be clear is that this is also states. So if the law says that you can't use that title, no matter what, as far as the prefix, D, um, then you have to follow the law. But yeah, if the law says, states. right, okay, <laughs> right, we got to, I mean, it's just like, it is what it is. We got to, got to follow yeah. the law. Yeah. Now, if your state says, well, you can use it, but you have to be designate, you know, your, your degree in which you are using that title, then you should yes. do that as well. Um, so, and so what, for me, I've always like plastered on social media I'm a doctor of nursing practice. It's plastered over my website. So yes. because I'm not here to fool anybody, I'm making it very clear. Yes. I go, in, go into my, see my patients. I am Dr. Jessica Chung, Dr. Chung, nurse practitioner. That's I do the same. It rolls yeah. off my tongue like, I don't, it's like a reflex. I don't, yes. I don't you know, I make yep. it very clear. And so I think that you just have to know your state laws. I, I probably am very surprised at how many nurse practitioners and nurses don't know their state laws regarding their profession. Mm. It surprises me them. and it's scary because yeah. a lot of people come to me saying, hey, you know, I want to do this and that. And I'll say, okay, what does your state law say? Like, what is what is the statutes? What, is, what are the, you know, the regulations? And they're like, I don't know. Yeah. And, you know, that's scary because forget about starting a business. You're a professional and you should understand your state laws in which you're practicing. Yeah, um, and good. so you have to understand and know your state laws. That's it's good. okay to seek out an attorney. I feel like people just shy away from, because just simply they don't want to pay for one. And I think that that is one of the best investments I've made as a professional and a business owner so that they can help you in understanding, okay, what it is that you're doing and what it is you're trying to do. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like there's a, there's a lot probably to that story that we don't know. Yeah, But that goes to say that those state laws were for that individual in her state, then they have to be followed. The state laws trump your, you know, professional Personally. degree. Yeah, it, that's really good. That's just the truth. You could have, you go to the best college, you get that degree, you, they, they confer you with that title. But if your state law says, no, you can't use it, the prefix at least, then you, you have to follow the state laws. That's so good. Yeah. Jessica, what is one thing that you would tell your younger self if you could go back to the start of your career as a nurse yeah. that you would say, I would want her to know this before she gets going? What's one uh, thing you would tell I her? I would probably tell her, I would tell her, don't settle. Oh. Don't settle at all. 
Yeah, that that is something I tell myself now. In every area of my life, I do not settle. And I would tell younger Jessica, don't settle. And and in my own right, I don't feel like I've ever ever settled, but I don't feel like that I was as confident as I should have been, even being younger. And so, you know, don't settle on it is that you want to dream, what you believe in, what you want to do, just don't settle. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. I love that. And that was the last question of the podcast. So I want <laughs> to end on that note. Do not settle. Know your worth. Know your value. And and again, spend some time figuring out what you want to do. Right. It is so much more important to understand the mission of your career and what you want to build Yeah, more so than just getting a job. And I was yeah. so focused mm-hmm. in on just get a job. Get a job as a nurse. Right. Okay, got one. Get a job as a nurse practitioner. Okay, got one. Okay, good yeah. job. Because you're losing your job. Get one. Get one. Got one. You know? mm-hmm. and so yeah. now there's this like like constant messaging and checking in that I'm doing with myself. I'm like, is this what I want for my career? Like, is this yeah. what I want for my, you know, that conversation I was not having with myself and now I have it on the reg and I'm constantly checking in with this is a line with the life. Mm-hmm. That I want. Right. Um, and I don't, I don't, I didn't do that. I was so thankful just to be taken right. like you know like at the at the school dance i'm so glad i have a, da- a partner but it's like it <laughs> sucks you can't dance right. like right. so now i'm like i want that partner you know the one that's over there like getting it down you know like so yeah. i'm a salsa dancer so that's kind of how i see it <laughs> yeah like you look and you're just like oh he looks like he's a good dancer I want to dance yeah so like <laughs> now having more of that mentality of like what is it that i want and yes. then chasing that and getting and doing the things to get me there i think is so smart and just again just not settling on oh this is what i have to take and and you know this job sucks and i hate my life and i don't like doing yeah. it it's like eh, time mm-hmm. to move time to move right um, yeah yeah so for the last part of the podcast is the rapid fire questions and these are just fun fly by the seat of your pants are you ready okay. to go okay Let's do all it. right i'm ready <laughs> so how do you answer your phone hello what do you say you should say hello. It depends if it's it's my person if it's personal phone ringing. It's, I'm yeah. like hello. Yeah. If it's my mom, I'm like yes, mom. Oh, respect. Appreciate that. <laughs> I respect or that like, Hi, mommy. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty eight times a day. So I'm like, what, what's going on now? <laughs> what I love. Yeah, yeah. the professional is just maybe I'll, I'll if, especially if it's the office. I'll just probably say hello. Thank you for calling. Only oh, because I don't want to know. I don't want the patients to know I'm answering. So if uh, the medical assistant sound great, I'll just say hello. How can I help you? <laughs> you just you just gave your tip away. Now all your patients are this. I'm like, Dr. Chung. <laughs> so it doesn't even work. But you still use it. That's funny. Right. What are you most grateful for in the whole world? My salvation. Oh, yes, come on. Yes, 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 yes. I, you know, I have a relationship with the Lord that I did not grow up having. And my relationship with God has just, it's just amazing what, when I pray and I see God Mm. and knowing it's because I took a step to join in him with a relationship. It's just like, you know, if you want to join with, you know, a woman joins with a man. And so I've joined with God. I took that step Almost 10 years ago, once I moved down to Florida, I joined it. I was baptized in Jesus' name. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, there's not a day I look back on my life before that. So I am grateful for where God has brought me and where he's taken me. Mm, I love that. I love that because there's so many aspects of... I believe this and stepping out in faith and yeah. working in that, in that space mm-hmm. that a lot of the world will say like, Oh, it's the universe, like whatever, but whatever it is that you call your source for me, again, it's the same. It's God. There is a connection with the Lord as you build something almost yeah. like Noah's Ark, Absolutely. almost like this other thing where you are building this big, this huge thing that you're just like, God, direct my steps as I make yes. these decisions and, and show Absolutely. me, you know, put somebody ahead of me to help me out and the different things that, again, I think we, he wants to lead us in certain things. And if he's called you to own your own business, he's going to equip you. And so Absolutely. I yep. think that is a very, very good thing and a wonderful thing to be grateful for. And yes. if you had to give someone a book to read, which would it be? And again, this can be on anything, but a book to read that you're like, this is, this is the go-to book. Go here. 
So I'm going to give two. Obviously, the Bible. Yeah. I was going to say, it's one of the greatest business problem, books. Yeah. Everything you need is in that book. Let me just be it's clear. That's true. That's it's true. It's in there. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Download the app if you need to. Search yep. the scriptures. They, it's in there for you. The second book, I would say, is Action Has No Season. I forgot the author's name, but he's an attorney. But mm -hmm. in the book, he talks about the fact that taking action, making the, or taking that next step in your life, in your profession, in your business, that there is no right or wrong time. Action has no season. It is that you're going to take action or, you, or you're not, and you're going to miss out. So I, I would recommend that you, action has no season yet. That is so good. That just sounds like, again, going back to not procrastinating, just do right. it now. And I talk about that all the time. I have a little sign in my office that says, yesterday crossed out, tomorrow crossed out, do it yeah. now. Do it now. And yeah. I love that because there's nothing, <laughs> that's all you have guaranteed yes. is the right now. And so, yeah, I love that. I love that title of that book. I'm going to write it down and check it out. And I agree with you on the Bible because I think the Bible is so chock full of like, just simple money hacks and money tips oh, and yes. who to get into Absolutely. business with and who not to get into business with and <laughs> right. integrity. And if you look at all yes. the different things, then you see like, oh my goodness, like God, God gets business. Yes. <laughs> yes. So Absolutely. That's, cool. <laughs> that's very cool. Well, thank you for your time today. Where can yes. people find you if they're wanting to reach out to you, just have you help them start their businesses? Yes. So you can reach me on all social media platforms, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Dr. Jessica Chung, Chung Dr. Jessica Chung, C-H-U-N-G. And also find us at the International Business Association for Nurses. It's our handle is IBA Nurses on all social media platforms. If you are in the Tampa Bay area, you can visit us at our office, JC Healthcare and Associates. We are local in the Tampa Bay area. Nice. I love Tampa. That's like my husband and I, like we've talked about if we were to ever move somewhere in Florida, like we want to go to the Tampa. Oh yeah. Tampa area. is growing. Tampa is becoming like, amazing. like amazing. the spot to be. Yes. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Yes. Like, yeah, for sure. And again, yes. it's Florida. So I love, I love right. the freedom of Florida. Right. What could go wrong? You're in Florida. It's the best here. state. <laughs> so true. It was wonderful to chat with you. Thank you for your time today, Jessica. Yes, thank enjoy. you, Dr. Sandra. It was nice yeah. chatting with you too. Yes. And guys, don't forget to enjoy the journey of your career. Check out Dr. Chung if you're looking for someone to, again, help you with your business or just reach out. If you're like, hey, listen, what do you think about this or that? She's open to chat and she yeah. would love nothing more than to hear from you. So guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.